Blessed be the wonderful, awesome, precious, excellent name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Woo! What a beautiful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. What a powerful name it is this morning. Hallelujah. Mm, we love you this morning, God. And we exalt the matchless name of King Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning again, everybody. Welcome again to those who are here. It is. It could not be the same if you were not here. But we thank God for one who is here. We praise God for his presence and we want to welcome those who are watching online. It is a pleasure to have you fellowship with us as we sit before the word of God. This word is very transforming if you let it. It is powerful as his name is. He says that he has exalted his word even above his very name and his name is powerful. So there's a whole lot of power in this word that goes forth if we can just grab it, if we can understand that it has power, power to save, power to heal, power to transform, power to do exceeding abundantly above all that we think or ask. So welcome again to Restoring Church of the Living God, where our desire always is to lift up this powerful name, the name of Jesus, and to proclaim his salvation in this earth. Hallelujah. And his power. Thank you, God. We just love you today, Father God. And Lord, as this word goes forth, we ask that you would you would let it go forth with power, with anointing. You said you would not send your word, Lord God, just in a vain way, but it's, you said that it would accomplish what you please. It will not return to you empty, void. So let this word, let this word walk or run, if it needs to be, into the hearts of the hearers, including mine. Let this word, oh God, have its way this morning in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Okay, so I thought about this topic because we were praying one morning, Wayne and myself, and I remember saying, my God, we have been through some things. Wow. It's just amazing. And you know, each time you think about it, you, um, you said, well, I don't need to. Brother Gary, chair, please. Oh, I guess she can sit here. She can, she can sit right here. That's fine. Um, yes, yeah, so, you know, sometimes you think about things and you say, well, those things might have happened several years ago or whatever. And you say, well, you don't really need to think about it because it's the same thing you're thinking about. But if you, if, if you, the, the more you think about these things that have, have had an impact on your life, the more you think about those things, it, it's, I tell you what, you don't, it doesn't bother you to keep rehearsing. It might sound like, you know, I guess other people around you might be tired of hearing you say them because it's like you keep saying those same things, but when, when you realize the impact that these experiences have had on your life, you will repeat them to yourself almost every day because each time you stand amazed at what God has done in your life, your mouth drop open literally because you're like, how did he work that out again? It's amazing. You never get tired of that, even for yourself. You don't get tired of, of, of meditating on the things that God has done in your life. Because if he hadn't done those things, you would not be where you are today. You would not be alive. Amen? And I know, I know you're hearing this and you're nodding. You're saying, yeah, some of the things I want, I, I've gone through. And the topic today is making it on broken pieces of your ship. Making it on broken pieces of your ship. So, have you ever looked back at your own life, the struggles, the heartaches, the dilemmas, 
the hard times you have passed through and wondered how on earth you made it. <laughs> oh my God. How is it that you were not destroyed and you have lived to tell the tale? Somebody had to tell the tale, and if you were dead, you would not be able to tell the tale, would you? So God said, uh-uh, I'm, I'm gonna let them live so that they can tell the tale and somebody else can benefit. Somebody else can rejoice. Somebody else can put their trust in me. So I'm gonna let them live so they can tell the tale. Somebody has to be there to tell the tale, right? To tell the story. So, sometimes in relating the events you have gone through, you find yourself shuddering, I mean literally, when you remember some of the challenging situations which confronted you, because it's like it takes you back to that time in your life. You see yourself right there present in that situation and you're like, oh my God, it seems so precarious, it seems so overwhelming. And you would tend to panic because it was just oh, so much. So when, you, when you're thinking about it or you're relating it to somebody else, you're like, oh, you can feel the emotions of that situation. So, you know, there was somebody else who went through some things and some hard, he went through some hard places, the Apostle Paul. Mm, we read so much about the Apostle Paul. There's a whole lot pertaining to this man's life. So much so that he wrote all those Pauline epistles, they call it, those letters from prison. Very powerful because a lot of what are in these, in these epistles, a lot of those things we hang on to daily. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He wrote that and several other things by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Paul himself was, he endured some trying experiences. He was imprisoned for his faith and also for spreading the good news about the saving power of Jesus Christ. And if you will recall, this man did not want anything to do with the Lord Jesus Christ initially. This man's name was Saul before it was, he was converted and God said, your name is gonna now be Paul. But he was a very zealous person, very passionate about what he believed. And he was very religious too. But his religion did not include the Messiah. And so he fought against Christians, if you recall. But anyway, so he was imprisoned because there was something in him that was just driving him, pulling him to, to minister the gospel. He knew where he had come from, and so, I mean, wow. It wasn't like, well, I'm gonna make a decision, even though he had to make a decision for, to witness for Christ, but he had this compulsion. I've got to, I've got to just tell the world about the saving grace of this Jesus Christ. I've got to, because he experienced so much in his conversion. So he was imprisoned, and, um, there are several chapters that you have to read in Acts. That's a wonderful book to read, by the way, because, and I remember Wayne saying, boy, this book, I have to really get into it because it has so much actions, the Acts of the Apostles. A whole lot of activity going on in there. And next thing you know, you're caught up with them. You're in a ship somewhere with them. My goodness, man, you're just in it. You're, you're just into this book here. You're, you're actually like, like you're a character in this book. So, as I say, it's certain, several chapters tell you what goes on with Paul in prison. And um, somewhere along the line, a relative of his, that person's son, found out that they were plotting, the Jews were plotting to kill him. As soon as there was any loophole, they were saying, you know what, we're gonna get this man, we're gonna kill him. But you see how good God is? Mm, don't you just love him? He reveals this, and the, the information comes to Paul, and he said, okay, go tell it to the, the, the governor. And so by that time, you know what? God is, he has given such favor to Paul that the governor says, oh, we're going to get him out of here. We're getting him out of this particular place. We're going to send him by night somewhere else 
So they send him by night and he goes to this one and that one and, and, and he's, he's, he's before different ones and they say, we want to hear you, we want to hear you. But when Paul decides that, look, I'm, I want, I'm appealing to Caesar, I want to go to Caesar for trial. They're like, oh, okay, we're going to send you. So they're sending him. They're sending him by boat. They're sending him from Caesarea to Rome, where he's to stand trial before Caesar. So he finds himself among other prisoners on a ship which is caught up in a violent storm. As if to say he has not had enough going on already in his life. So we're going to read from Acts chapter 27, 1 to 4, and we're going to just go along and just, you know, follow me with, with, with this, please. Just follow along with me. And in Acts chapter 27, verses 1 to 4, remember now, he's being transported from Caesarea to Rome because he has appealed to Caesar. He says, I want to stand before Caesar. It says, and when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion, that is one over a hundred soldiers of Augustus's band. And entering into a ship of Adramitium, we launched meaning to sail by the coast of Asia. One Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. Verse 3. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty, isn't God good? What favor? To go unto his friends to refresh himself. So apparently they stopped somewhere and he was able to get out of the boat and, you know, meet some friends and you know, maybe get a shower or whatever it is, get some, you know, just change of clothes or something. Okay, so let's look at verses 9 to 10. And if I could have someone else read that, that would be wonderful. Verses 9 to 10. Brother Gary? Uh, uh, it said, no, much time had been lost. Navigation was dangerous because even the time the fast was already over. So Paul began to strongly warn them, saying, Men I sense and I sense after careful thought and observation that this voyage will certainly be a disaster with great loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. Mm. All right. Okay, so we're gonna move on to verses fifteen. To 20, if someone wants to read that from here, you go ahead. Verses 15 to 20. And when the ship was and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, struck sail and so were driven. And we began exceedingly tossed with a tempest. The next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us. All hope that we should be saved was taken away. Good. Thank you, Sister Veronica. Could someone now read from verses 21 to 25? After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should not follow my advice. I should not have set sail for Crete and brought on these devils and lost. But even though I urge you, Keep up your courage and be in good spirits, because there will be no loss of life among you, but only loss of the ship. For this very night, an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood before me and stood and said, Stop being afraid, Paul. 
you must stand before Caesar. And the whole God has given you all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, man. For I believe God will have complete confidence in him. And it will turn out exactly as I have told. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. So right there, you're getting the account step by step as this violent storm struck the boat that they were traveling in. Most of us, if not all of us, are familiar with the term survival is for the fittest. <laughs> not for the weakling, right? So the weaklings really won't survive. Only those that are fit and strong, robust. Now, I believe that is true to an extent. Of course, the Bible tells us that we can do nothing without God. Absolutely nothing. We can't even open up our own eyes in the morning, although some people think that they, they go like this, just keep it, and they, just, they think they go like this by themselves. Not really. Because you know what, if our brains were not functioning, we could not open an eyelid. We could not talk. I know this from personal experience. When you're having a mini stroke or a stroke, you cannot function. Your limbs can't move. So we don't open up our eyes ourselves. We don't just jump out of the bed ourselves and go about our business ourselves. If it were not for the power of God, we would not be able to lift a little finger. Do nada. Nothing. So, We see this in Matthew 19, where God says that we can do nothing without him. <laughs> Look, right here, Jesus made this statement because he had an encounter with a young man who came up to him. And he said, um, you know, I was just sharing it this morning. Good master, what, what, what am I to do in, to inherit the kingdom of heaven? And, and he said, um, well, Jesus said, do this, this, that. Honor your mother, your father, blah, blah, blah. You know, they think, right? Have no other gods before me, etc." He went down the line and he said, well, all these things I've done since I was a little boy. So what else? And he said, well, go and sell what you have and give to the poor, and he was like, hmm. he did not just say that, he said, he, he, the Bible says he went away sorrowful because he was a rich person, and that was kind of hard for him to do, and then Jesus turned to the disciples and said, well, my God, so who can be saved then? And that's when Jesus said, in other words, you know, a poor person can be saved, a rich person can be saved. It's like, well, I mean, who really? I mean, this is impossible. So then I had to look it up because I was like, why did Jesus say that again? But he beheld them, the disciples, and he said unto them, with men, this is impossible. Right? Because he, oh, I missed out that part where he said it's better for, a, um, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And that's so very small when you're threading a needle. It's, that, that hole is so small. <laughs> Brother Garnet, it's getting harder for me these days. But I saw when I get it through, I was like, yes, I got that thread right through the hole of the needle. <laughs> you know, but it says it's easier for a, a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And a camel is pretty big, right? Through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So then that's when the disciples said, well, who? Well, who then can be saved? My goodness. So then he said, with, read it with me, please. With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So, all things are possible. When we put our trust in him, we can survive mentally, physically, and spiritually. Philippians 4.13 says, I 
can do all things. Some things. All things. A few things. All things. One thing. All things. Most things. All Todo? <laughs> of course, todo means all. And we have someone in our midst who speaks Spanish, but she really wants to learn more English. <laughs> so we can do todo, all things, through Christ. our parents, Christ. our grandparents, Christ. our spouses, nope. our best friends, of course, our best friends. Nope. Our bosses, nope. the government, Christ. through whom? Christ. Oh my goodness, I can do all things, all things through Christ. who does what? Strength. Oh my goodness, oh boy, wow, which means then that we don't have all that mm, as we think we do have. Survival really is survival for the. Let me give you my best type. <laughs> survival for the fittest. <laughs> oh, survival. Oh, I can do it in Elvis because I'm fit. I'm strong. If he, if we're strong, why is he strengthening us? <laughs> we're not. We're not that strong, are we? If somebody pays you a compliment and says, boy, you're such a strong person, you're a strong Christian, you know what you say to them? <sighs> you're looking at a weakling, but what you're seeing is the manifestation of the strong God inside of me. Let it always be so. Let, let it not get to our heads that because we were able to, to come through a battle, that we are strong. Woo! Just look at me. I'm strong. Really? It's a strong God inside of us. We can only do all things because of him who strengthens us. Amen? Amen. So that's why I said earlier, to me that statement or that term, survival is for the fittest, is true to an extent. And we can only be fit through Christ. It's not based on our own merits or our own strength because our strength is small. It's very small. And we come to find that out when we find ourselves in the midst of a storm like what Paul was going through with his companions, the, the prisoners on that ship and the centurion and different ones. We can compare this ship to our lives. I remember some years ago I had a dream about a good friend of mine. She was in her late 80s at the time. In fact, when she passed away, she could have been about, I think, 93. One of my best friends. And um, I dreamt that she and I and some other ladies, I guess it must have been a ladies' cruise ship. <laughs> I have no idea why. <laughs> but we were on a ship, a cruise. and. Um, I dreamt that she, somehow we were talking and I realized that I had not taken my um, gown or whatever it is for formal wear for sitting at the captain's table for those who have gone on cruises. You know that there's that thing where you sit at the captain's table. And um, I said to her, I said, I don't know why I didn't bring mine. Everybody else had theirs. And I remember calling Wayne <laughs> and said, I forgot to bring something to sit at the captain's table. He said, when, when you get off at the other port, just buy something. I said, yeah, that's a good idea. So that's what I did. I guess I woke up after that. And I kept saying, what on earth is this dream all about? But I found out later by revelation from the Holy Spirit that this ship was really, this cruise ship was life itself. We were traveling in, along the path called life. And I found out that this dear friend of mine she had her gown, 
and the others had theirs. Because, you know, after I woke up, I'll tell you what, I kept saying, Lord, I don't know why I didn't have any, I wasn't properly dressed. I said, Lord, if, if there's something in my life that's causing me not to be properly dressed, please show it to me. Because everybody else had theirs and I didn't have mine. I said, it, it concerned me, right? So that's when the revelation came. That this dear friend of mine and all the others, and they were older than me, they were dressed to sit at the captain's table. And the captain himself was who? Jesus Christ. And he began to show me that she would be going on soon. Kept that from her for a long time, for several years. I didn't want to say, guess what? You're going to be that. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to say that to her. I said, I didn't want to. Then I found out that she had been yearning to go on because she had been going through some, you know, some situations with her body. And she was just tired of being here, wanted to be with her Lord. So when I found that out, I told her what I had dreamt, and she said, oh, thank you. That's what she needed to hear. And um, so sometime later, we were making our way to New York to attend her funeral. However, this ship, this cruise ship that I had dreamt about was life itself. You and I are on a cruise. We're on a ship. This is our lives, right? And um, there are times when storms come against our ships, our lives, violent storms. Not just a little gale, a little breeze, as a and it ends. A little gale. <laughs> That's her name. My gale. <laughs> it's not just a little thing and you know, five minutes it's over, but it's a storm, a violent storm. And it seems as though all hope is gone. And Acts chapter 27 and verse 20, we just read it, what does it say? When? When neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was ta had been taken away. All hope. There was indeed a little, little, Piece of hope, no glimmer, no little ray, just all hope was gone. Wow. Have you ever been in a situation where it seems like all hope is gone? Think about it, think back. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt, because of the circumstances and how pressing they were, that all hope was just completely gone? Gone. Sometimes we go through things like that. But thank God for the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit, the comforter. The Bible says when Jesus left, he said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I couldn't do that. That would be very irresponsible of me. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the comforter. He will comfort you. He will carry you. He will teach you truth. He will be with you because I go back to my Father. I'm sending my spirit to be with you all the time, not just when you come to church. Every single time, he'll be with you. He'll be with you in your home, he'll be with you on the road, in the supermarket, in the back, wherever. This Holy Spirit I'm sending is gonna be always with you, very present, especially in a storm. You don't want to be caught in a storm and you are crying out for God's help and he's way over there in another place and he can't be present with you. Because you remember the Bible says he's omnipresent. He's present every single place. Omni. All. You don't want to be caught in a storm and you try to send God a text or an email and you get, what's that signal we get, some, the sounding message we get sometimes? Not in network. <laughs> I love that one. Not in network. Oh, and you know, you're, you're, on, you're supposed to be in network, but you get in that recording. What's another recording? What's another recording? Um, 
the number you have tried to reach has been such and such or disconnected. Ah! What? I'm left hanging. No hope. Oh my God. Really? Or it's a busy signal because God is really dealing with the very important things of life, like what's going on, you know, in Afghanistan and Haiti and different places. He's kind of busy right now, really. You know, I mean, think about it. He's God of all the earth and he has a whole lot on his plate. That's right. You can kind of try and handle it even though you're caught in this violent storm. Really. But no, you know what I love? Mm, my God, that he's a very present help in time of trouble. God is our refuge. A very present help. I think that's um, 46 in time of trouble, Psalm 46. We won't go there. But thank God for his comfort and presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit, who speaks to us during these troublesome sometimes, grievous times, and gives us the assurance we need. We read that earlier in verses 23 and 24. Let's look at that, verses 23 and 24. So? Um, Acts chapter tw um, 27, verses 23 and 24. Look at that. He says, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. So you know what? You have to know him for yourself. You can't say, well, you know, my grandmother knew him, you know, so while I'm in the storm, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting my grandmother is um, <laughs> praying for me. <laughs> my mother, oh boy, she's, mm, my father, mm, with the Lord. But you know what he says here? He says, whose I am, I belong to him. And whom I serve. If you serve God with all of your heart and you know you belong to him, if you know that he's yours and you're his, man, in the violent storm, when everything is pressing on you, you know that you can call out to him. And he's not going to say, oh, I'm over here in Africa taking care of some urgent business. Can you hold on a little bit? You're not going to get a disconnect recording because he's going to be right there. He'll come into your circumstances and he'll begin to change things. And sometimes people might say, so, if he loves me, why is it he's allowing the storm to come? I could do without the storm. I just want to be able to cruise on my life journey, my life's journey. I just want to be able to sail along and not have all these issues. Just sail from here right into heaven. Can that just be, Lord? Could we just have it that way? Why the storms? Why the storms? And sometimes, if we didn't have the storm, we wouldn't even understand that there's one who can calm the storms. We wouldn't understand that we need to cry out to him. You see, this develops our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. If we didn't have a problem, we would not know that he could solve it. Right? We would love if our lives could be problem free, but they're not. And that's for a reason. Several reasons. The enemy is always trying to destroy us. That's one of the things. And another thing is he allows this so that we can understand that we can trust him, place our faith in him, and know that he can bring us through the storm. Because if they didn't come, we would know that we could go through a storm. And we're stronger after the storms too. We are. We have learned some things. And we hold on to those things. They're, they're, they're treasure. So, the Holy Spirit comes, he speaks to us, and it says, There stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Mm. See the connection right there, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wow, how, what a generous God. He didn't just say, Oh, Paul, I'm just going to save you. I'm just going to pluck you out of this ship. But he said, you and all those that are in this ship, I'm going to save all of you. And you know how many that was? 276 people. That's a nice tidy sum. 
276. Don't you think that's a lot of people? How reassuring to know that these 276 persons who were in the ship actually survived. My God doesn't lie. He's not a man that he should lie. He was right. He said that to Paul and he fulfilled his promise. Some were able to swim to shore and others who couldn't swim held on to boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. Verse 44, let's look at that. It says, and the rest, meaning those who did not just jump into the water, because verse 43 tells us that, the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Because mm, 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 mm. you see, the soldiers, been, they were taught and trained to kill anyone who would escape in a situation like this, because they were prisoners, so they, they were going to do that. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which should swim, which is verse 43, should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And then, of course, 44, which I read earlier, some, the rest of them, that's how they survived. They escaped all, all safe to land. What? That, that's it's like such an ending to this, this story concerning this violent storm hitting the ship. Now, sometimes all that you and I have left of our ship, our ships, our lives, are broken pieces and it would appear that once broken something is beyond being used right this are that's how you know it, it, it seems just apparent that when this thing is broken except in the case like when my husband will say I'll put it back together <laughs> he said don't throw it away I can fix it the wagon maker right here waiting He'll say, and I'm thinking, honey, that was broken in like five, ten pieces. <laughs> and he'll say, oh, no, 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 I just use this and that. And I look at it later on, I'm like, no, how on earth <laughs> did he get it back into one piece? <laughs> and he said, it was easy. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> but usually when something is broken, Especially if it's not a lot of things, it's just a throw that in the garbage. It's just a spit for the scrap heap, really. We can look at our broken dreams, our relationships in a different light. So, it looks so devastating. It looks like all hope is lost. But when we look at them, in a certain light that you know what? Maybe God allowed these broken pieces for a reason. Look what happened. Some people were able to hang on to the boards for life and broken pieces of the ship, their own life. The ship is like our lives, right? They were able to hang on for dear life and that took them to the shore where they needed to be. If we can look at our broken dreams, our broken relationships, etc., etc., in a different light, in that light, we can use these broken pieces, these broken pieces, we can use them to transport us to what God has for us. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about it. Because sometimes, you know, we we, 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 will, we look at the broken pieces of our lives and we will just be paralyzed in those situations and say, well, it's all over. There's nothing else I can do at this point. Everything is just shattered. Dreams gone. There's nothing else I can do. But if we start to think, you know what, maybe God allowed this so that I can be transported by this not be overwhelmed and destroyed by this, 
I could allow myself to just be destroyed by it. But then again, I could say, what if God allowed this so that I can use this to get to where he wants me, the shore? What if he allowed it? I want to take this opportunity today to encourage someone who might be present or might be listening. If you are experiencing storms in your life, and all hope is gone. You don't even see one little window. You know, they said there's a light at the end of the tunnel, right? You don't even see a tunnel. There's pure darkness. No little glimmer of hope anywhere. You can make it to your shore on your broken pieces. You can use your broken pieces as transportation to safety. Doesn't seem possible. But with God, all things are possible. And you know, when I was writing this, I'm just about finished right now, but I don't know, it just came to my spirit. Jesus' body was broken. His body was broken for you, 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 and me, for this world. And look what happened from the brokenness of his body. Resurrection power. Oof! Resurrection power hit that broken body. And after three days, man, he was... Of course, he appeared to his disciples and different ones in a, you know, in bodily form, but then he went to his father. He was glorified, and he went back to his father in heaven. But brokenness doesn't mean the end of the story. Brokenness can lead to resurrection power. It can lead to survival of the fittest, the fittest in spirit. Not just the fittest this way, but the fittest meaning those who place their trust in God can survive, can make it to the shore. If, if it's boards, any kind of board that we can grab, any kind of broken piece that we can grab, we're going to use that to take us to where we need to get to safety. And we know that God is more than able to do so. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we think or ask. He is. So thank you so much for listening. And I pray that somebody got something out of this. Because I know I did. And I, I trust you. You did as well. God bless you all. Broken pieces, as she says, that when we have those broken pieces, that's the opportunity to, to try and put them back together, right? We've all gone through times in our lives when we've had situations that didn't work out as we planned, relationships that didn't work out, um, lost jobs, homes, whatever those situations that cause us to have to call out to our Heavenly Father, right? Amen. And He's always there for us, right? He say, won't like, forget us, He won't forsake us. He'll always be with us, for us. And just to, as a reminder, Sandra has you know, remind, uh, explained to us what Paul went through on that ship yeah. that got broken up and was and we survived that brokenness in their situation and the Lord brought them through mm -hmm. just as he's brought us all through right mm -hmm. I'm sure every one of us Gary can recall situations in our lives mm -hmm. this is Veronica Charles mm -hmm. Brother Garnet Brother Garnet and Elvis mm -hmm. of all that we've gone through situation that that Lord may have 
prepared us to go through, to strengthen us, right? To allow us to not rely on ourselves because we couldn't do it ourselves, right? We had to rely on Him because only Him could have brought us through. Amen. Only Him. So, this is a reminder that even tomorrow, even this coming week, that we may go through troubled times, situations. Like our trip back from Kingston, right? <laughs> we had a little truck problem with the car, and then we had to crawl again. <laughs> we had to crawl up that hill again, but we made it. We made it home, and things are back to back and back to normal. But we called upon Him. Sandra was in that car praying, <laughs> and here I was out in the, in the in, underneath the hood trying to get this thing put back together. <laughs> but we made it through. Thank you, Lord. Yes. So again, just a reminder that He is always there once we rely on Him to strengthen us and to keep us on that straight and narrow. Keep us reliant on Him because we can't do it ourselves. We'll fail every chance we get. We may think we're making it through. We may think, oh, we're succeeding, we're going on, yes. And then that wheel just fall apart. So we thank you, Lord, that we have you as our strength to make us make it through this world of troubled times. Lord God, we just thank, thank you, Lord God, that, that you are our Father, you are our God, our Heavenly Father, our Abba Father, yes, yes, yes. that is always there to give us and to keep us, protect us through troubled times, through those storms of our lives, that we may survive. And we, may, and we may get up and keep moving. So Lord God, for each and every one of us that's here today, Lord God, and that's listening, be reminded, Lord God, be reminded, our saints, that the God of our Father, the God of, of, our, of this world is there, is always there to keep us, to make us, help us make it through these times. Just like the times of this current world, this time, this current times, yes. Yes. that that you have are making, helping us through, helping us to survive these troubled times, in the times that we have before us. So we thank you, God. We glorify your holy, precious name for all you have done and all you will do, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, if anybody needs prayer, um, you know, because I, I, I believe this word really is a word that the Lord wanted to come forth at this time, but this is 